What's going on, everyone? Got an article that I thought was worth sharing here. It's an interview with the head of Ukraine's military intelligence, Major General Budanov. He talks about all sorts of things, from the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine, the arrival of Iranian short-range ballistic missiles, Russian mobilization, and how and when Ukraine will end up winning this war. So I thought it was a couple of points worth talking to here. Now, before we get started, the link to this article will be in the description below, so you can check it out for yourself. And remember, as we're going through all of this, this is one man's opinion. It's a man that's relatively informed, it's on the ground, but it is his opinion. He's a part of the Ukrainian government, a part of the Ukrainian military. Uh, so take that into consideration when you hear all this. But to be sure, I'm going to try to split out the parts that are directly his quotes, and then I'll provide a little analysis when necessary. So starting right out the gate, the question is, how long will it take Ukraine to recapture Kherson City? Badanov says, most likely the seizure operation of Kherson will last until the end of next month. That would be November of 2022. He continues, the most trained and most capable Russian units are currently in Kherson. A large share of them are from airborne troops of the Russian Federation, Russian Special Operations Forces, and the Naval Infantry, so the most capable units that Russia has. The combat component, the units that can pose any danger to us with our operation, is around 40,000. So there's been a lot of movement in and around, this is me talking now, there's been a lot of movement in and around the Kherson front over the last couple days, but at least as of the end of October, Ukraine estimated Russian strength at around 40,000 strong. Now that number is going to play into some other topics here, namely around Belarus. So the question, Ukraine just bolstered its troops, the troops along its northern border. Can you provide any further details about why and how concerned you are about a Russian attempt to attack Perhaps not Kiev, but Western Ukraine to cut off supplies pouring in from allies, which has been a big question from the start of the war. When, how, and can Russia cut off some of those Western supplies flowing in from the Western parts of the country? So Bonadov says, cutting off those supply lines from the West is a strategic goal, and I could say a cherished dream of the Russian Federation. Speaking of Russian military activities in Belarus, the presence of the Russian military in Belarus is currently not that high. Only around 4,300 service members are there, and they are very limited. That grouping is very limited in heavy weapon systems, and the majority, around 80% of the grouping, are mobilized personnel. I can say that in the current stage, there is not a threat of invasion from Belarus, but that situation could change very fast when Russia loses Kherson, which, remember from the previous comment, he said would potentially be in November. That capable grouping in Kherson, after withdrawal from Kherson, will partially be relocated to the Zaporozhye direction, Part of them might move northwards towards Belarus to create a threat there, so we have to be cautious about it. Sounds pretty logical. There's the potential of the threat from the north. Uh, they have to keep an eye on it, but nothing too significant at this point. It does sound like that's an area that Russia or that Ukraine's going to keep an eye on, depending on how things shake out in Kherson. Now, moving back to the map, this is one of the more, uh, I don't know if I would say controversial, but you don't see a lot of uh, predictions like this, so it's worth calling out. In terms of Crimea, when do you think Ukraine might be launching an offensive there, and how long do you think it would take to take Crimea back? Now, Crimea is the area outlined in dark blue, kind of in the bottom middle of this map right here. It's a peninsula off the southern portion of Ukraine. It was essentially initially annexed by Russia in this current conflict back in 2014. There hasn't been really any ground fighting in Crimea so far in this war. There's been some some air attacks, there's been some drone attacks, things like that. But anyways, Budanov goes on to say, quote, this is only happening by military force, and that will happen next year. So even though that's pretty vague, hearing Ukraine put a timeline on when they're going to retake Crimea by military force is something substantial. Continuing on with that kind of Crimea area there. There was an attack, if you recall, last month on the Crimean Bridge, the Kirsch Bridge, they go by a couple different names. The question was about that. Was the wave of missile and drone attacks launched on October 10th pre-planned before the Kirsch Bridge attack? Badanov says, yes. We possess information and evidence that the attack was pre-planned before the 10th of October, and they used the Kirsch Bridge explosion as a pretext as justification for those massive strikes at Ukraine. But as I say, it was pre-planned long before all of that. There was some analysis that came out shortly after the kind of... So it was after that attack where we saw the first major uptick in drone and missile attacks on Kiev, the capital city of Kiev, as well as other um, 
uh, that are civilian and infrastructure targets, not on the front lines where the fighting is actually happening. So that was when that really kicked off. There were some claims that it was, and, and Russia even said it was as a response to the, the attack on the bridge. But right out the gate, there were a lot of people saying there's way too much that went into this targeting and, and resource allocation to carry these strikes out, that it couldn't have happened in a matter of, of one or two days. There had to be some sort of pre-plan involved. Now, whether uh, Russia carried out that strike on the bridge to justify that sort of assault on Ukrainian cities, or if it just happened to line up well, so Russia had an excuse to carry it out, uh, not sure. But either way, interesting to see that they have some evidence that those attacks were pre-planned. Moving on, a couple more here. Russian mobilization. How is the mobilization of so many untrained and poorly supplied troops affecting the battle from your point of view? Badanov says it doesn't have a significant influence. We have to give them credit that they managed to mobilize around 200, 2,000 troops. Mobilize. Struggled with that word. And 200, 2,000 is roughly the number I've heard from a couple different sources now. But you were right to say that they're poorly trained and poorly equipped. That's why it has no significant influence. They're just throwing cannon fodder at us, but in modern warfare, that doesn't have a lot of impact and decisive meaning in the war. Now, one thing, and this is me speaking, I've heard that we need to not be so focused on where these troops are going right now, but the impact they will have in a couple months' time. That's something, of course, we'll have to wait and see. Might have the same impact in three months that it's having right now, uh, but we'll see what it looks like once they're more integrated into the force. Getting into the Putin nuclear threats. Vladimir Putin has made several threats around the use of nuclear weapons, and there's a narrative out of Moscow that Ukraine is developing a dirty bomb. First of all, do you think Putin will order a nuclear strike on Ukraine? Badanov says, first on the potential usage, the theoretical potential usage of nuclear weapons by Russia against us, theoretically that is possible. I love how he kind of, it's possible, it's theoretical, potentially. Of course, any country that has nuclear weapons could potentially use said nuclear weapons. Now he says, because Russia is a terrorist state with a nuclear mace. But that is just a possibility. We're not observing any preparations for a nuclear strike at Ukraine. thought that was worth pointing out. Uh, speaking of lies spread by the Russian Federation that Ukraine is allegedly preparing a dirty bomb, Ukraine has never in its history produced such devices. It has never planned, it's not planning, and it is not going to plan to do anything like that. That is pretty in line with what we've heard at this point so far. Russia has a claim that this is happening. Ukraine and their Western supporters, the United States, NATO, uh, have all been firmly in the camp of this isn't happening. We don't see any signs of this happening. So nothing drastically different there in the dirty bomb front. How concerned are you about the Iranian short-range ballistic missiles capable of striking targets at distances between 186 and 435 miles that are coming to Russia? And when do you think those will get there? Badanov says, I believe that likely next month we'll see them used here. So that would have been referring to November 2022. It's a serious threat because Iranian missiles, unlike Russian ones, are quite high precision, very high speed, and those features have been battle-proven. On that note, I did see some reporting recently that some of these drones are either in, these shipments have either begun or already arrived in Russia, so not crazy that we're going to start seeing these used before too long. Finally, the question, how does this end? What does victory look like for Ukraine? Badanov says it's very simple. At the first stage, we'll reach our borders of 1991, and we'll consider that a good sign and a good opportunity to finish the war. Of course, the follow-on question, when do you think that'll happen? Badanov wraps up by saying next year. So the head of Ukraine's military intelligence estimates that by the end of 2023, they will have retaken all of the territory that Russia took during the 2022 invasion, during the 2014 annexation pushes into some of those separatist regions in the east, as well as Crimea, and reestablish the borders of 1991. So again, this is one man's opinion. Uh, who's very heavily tied into the war, but the article is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. It's pretty long, but try to pull out some, some good snippets here for you. That'll do it for now. We'll see you all next time.